Hey, what's up? Back with some more PS2 content. Uh, in my previous video, which was a while ago, I showed how to make a free McBoot memory card. And I promised I'd make a video showing how to do this. Um, showing how to use the PS2 Slim to play the games using the free McBoot card. Now, the problem with the PS2 Slim is that it doesn't have a hard drive slot like the the fat PS2. So there's really only two ways you can play games on the PS2 Slim. So you can either, one, use the USB port and play the games off of a flash drive. The only downside to playing them off the flash drive is that the read-write speeds are really slow on the USB port on the PS2 Slim. So you're gonna get a lot of, sometimes you'll get weird artifacts or games will just take a really long time to load. So the only other option then is to use the, you can actually use the ethernet port on the PS2 Slim to play games over a network file share essentially. So the only things you'll need for this are uh, a PS2, it doesn't have to be a Slim, but if you have a fat PS2, I would highly recommend doing the free hard drive boot, which there are lots of great videos for that. Uh, I can even put a link in the comments or description for that. Um, not gonna reinvent the wheel there. There's lots of great videos on that. Um, so you'll need a PS2. I'm using a PS2 Slim. You'll need a laptop. You could use a desktop. It's just easier with a laptop because you can carry it around with ethernet. Um, I just used a really old laptop that I wasn't using anymore because you kind of have to mess around with the network settings so it can kind of screw with your internet um, if you're using a laptop for other things. You'll need an ethernet cable. Uh, and that's pretty much it. With, with those three items, you should be able to do this process. So without further ado, I'll show how to set up the laptop and then go into how to do the setup on the PS2 side. Cheers. So the first step here is going to be downloading OPL Manager. This is what we're going to be using to create the OPL library on your computer. This is what the PS2 uses to access all your games. And so we're going to download this here. And when the download finishes, we can unzip the files here. And I, I'm just going to put it on the desktop. You can put this wherever you want to put it, wherever you put your programs. Let's put it on the desktop for this demo. So once you have this, you're going to want to create a folder. And I'm just going to create it on the desktop. And you want to call it PS2SMB. And then you can run OPL Manager. And you're going to want to make sure that this is set to normal. And then the path to select is the folder that you just created called PS2 SMB. And it's going to say no CD or DVD or out for art folder found. That's okay because it's going to create those for us. As you can see here, it's going to create the folders and we want to click yes. So now you're going to want to close OPL. And if you open the PS2 SMB folder, you now see that it has created some folders for us. So now you're going to want to go to where you've saved your ISO files for your games. And so for me, I have two here. It's Burnout 3 and Simpsons Hit and Run. And then you open up your PS2 SMB folder, go to the DVD folder, and move your ISOs for your games into this DVD folder. Now you can close this and open OPL, open OPL up again. And it should now detect the two ISOs. It's going to say, uh, at least for me here, it says that there's two invalid files. Uh, and that's because the name of the game is not in quite the correct format. So the way you do this is you can get the title from the DB here, this button. And then you can see it updated this title. And then you can try to update the file name and it should insert what it needs to um, to get the file correct. And then do the same thing for this one. And you can see that it will update the file name. And I don't like how this one is all caps, so I'm just going to, going to rename it so it's not in all caps here. So now a cool thing you can do is you can also get the game art. 
So you can go here, batch actions, and select uh, art download. And then check all these boxes, and then click start. And it'll go through all your games and download all the game art. For all the games here, you can see it's downloading that, which is pretty awesome. So then if you go into your art folder, you can see that it's, it's actually downloaded all of, that, uh, all of that game art in those photos. Now on to the network setup phase. So what you'll want to do is right click and go to network and to internet settings. And then go to the network and sharing center. Choose advanced sharing settings. And you want to make sure that network discovery is turned on for the network that you're on. So you can see it says current profile and turn on file and printer sharing. Also then go here to make sure network discovery is turned on and file and printer sharing is also on. Then go to all networks and then turn on sharing and then turn off the password protective sharing. Okay, I wanted to pause here quick because I think this is really important. So the when you do this for this folder, it will basically make the contents of whatever you put in this folder and also this folder itself editable by anybody in your network, not just viewable, but edit editable. So anyone on your network can put any kind of file in there. They could take any kind of file out of there. So this is why I recommended doing this on a laptop that you're not really using because then you just don't have it connected to any network and you the only quote unquote network you have is the ethernet cable plugged from the laptop to your PlayStation 2. So just be aware that um, it is a security vulnerability to be aware of. So now what we can do is we can go to right click and go to properties on the PS2 SMB folder, go to sharing, advanced sharing, share this folder, go to the permissions and allow full control. Hit OK and then apply and then hit OK. You also want to go to security and click edit and then click add and here you want to type everyone and I always click check names just to make sure that I didn't make a typo here and it should underline like that and then click OK and then click allow full control and OK and now this will allow anyone on your network to view the files in this folder the PS2 SMB folder here including your PS2 once we hook it up to the laptop so now we want to open up Windows settings and go to the network status screen here. And we want to click change adapter options. And I'm going to be connecting the Ethernet to the PlayStation 2. So I want to select the Ethernet adapter here. You can see it's Killer E 2500 gigabit Ethernet controller. I have a few other ones, but these are all like NordVPN or other virtual networks. You don't want to select those. You want to select the one that is your physical ethernet controller and doesn't say anything about a VPN or anything like that. So click proper, right click it and then click properties and then go down to internet protocol version four, TCP IPv4, click it and then click properties. And then you're gonna to wanna to put the following IP address in here. You wanna select use the following IP address uh, and this is kind of arbitrary but I put it in here like this, 192.168.2.1, and then the subnet mask of 255.255.2550. And you wanna remember these numbers or write them down because we're gonna to have to enter them into our PS2 so that it knows where to find this laptop on the network. So now what we can do is I'll show you the physical setup I have for the PlayStation 2 and then we can move over to the PS2 and show you how to set up those settings within OPL. Okay, so this is just showing how the PS2 is hooked up here. So you can see we have the ethernet cable plugged into the back of the PS2 there. And we've got our frame boot memory card right here. And then the Ethernet cord is plugged in directly into the Ethernet port on the back of the laptop here. 
So without further ado, we'll boot into the PlayStation and show you how it works. Okay. So what we'll want to do here now that we're booted into Freemake Boot is go down to Open PS2 Loader. And then it may take a second for this to boot up. If it's loading, you can see that here it is loaded the games. For you, it most likely will not look like this. Uh, I've already gone in and done all the setup that we need to do. So let's get you all that nice setup stuff that I got. So. First thing is you'll press start to open the free, sorry, the OPL menu. And then you want to go down to network settings. And I already have everything pre-input here. So you basically can just take this whole page and just input it into your settings page here. But basically the major changes are we set the IP address type for the PS2 to static set the IP address to 192.168.2.2, .2. set the subnet mask to 255.255.255.0, try to say that three times fast, set the gateway to 192, the 168.2.1, and then same thing for the DNS server. You'll notice this is what we set the IP address to on the laptop in the previous step. For the SMB server, this is actually telling the PS2, it's, it's telling OPL where to find that file share that we created that has the um, that has the actual game files on it. So we set the address type to IP. We set the address to 192.168.2.1. That's the address of the computer. And then we set the share. This is the share name to the name of that folder we created. So this needs to be exactly the same uh, we used capital letters, so we want to use all caps here, or else it will not work. So for us, that was PS2 SMB. And then the user will just be guest, and the password is nothing, since we made it so that folder can be accessed by anyone on the network. So what you can do now is you can click reconnect. Uh, so go over to reconnect and hit X. And then what it will do is try to connect to that SMB share. If everything is working, you should now be able to press circle and go to the games list and see the games here with all the game art and everything that we had. One more thing that you can do to make OBS, um, uh, sorry, not OBS, I'm looking at OBS right now, to make OPL look a little nicer is you can go down to the display settings and you can set the video mode to uh, 1920 by 1080 i this won't actually make your games output at that resolution. It simply makes um, OPL output at 1920 by 1080. Um, if you're using component cables or a different output source, you may only be able to go up to like 480p or 720p. I don't remember what the highest was, but since I'm using my fancy little um, PS2 to HDMI converter, I can do 1920 by 1080 uh, in OPL to get this nice output here. So before I do anything else, make sure to go down to save changes and hit save. And what that will do is it'll save your settings to the memory card uh, so that you don't have to do this all over again. And now if we select the game here, it should boot into it. And for whatever reason, I get some like artifacts when my games first boot over ethernet. And more visual artifacts. Just ignore those. It's just testing, right? A couple more. Just gotta load all the all the rectangles or something. Oh, here we go. Burn. We're in burnout. Let's go. Well, I hope that this guide was helpful to you. I hope you were able to successfully get your PS2 Slam hooked up over the Ethernet and running your games. If not, leave a comment, and we can see what might have gone wrong for you along the way. Otherwise. I hope you have fun gaming.